Hello and welcome to Learn TV channel. My name is Philip and I will be your host for this episode. Our guest for today is Bashar Omeish, supply chain and operations professional with over 25 years of hands-on experience in the fields of supply chain and procurement. Before dedicating his career to train people and passing down the knowledge and experience to other professionals, Bashar has held a number of senior positions in recognized companies such as PepsiCo, Althea Marketing, Saudi Contractor Supply, Creative Beauty, Al Riot, and others. Bashar, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you as our guest. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, having this uh, opportunity to be with you today. Thank you very much, and uh, it's my pleasure to be with you. The supply chain is the gas that makes the engine run for manufacturing and retail. Without it, you have no product to sell, no inventory to stock, and no revenue to earn. Unfortunately, there will always be disruptions to the supply chain that can derail everything and force both retailers and manufacturers to pick up the pieces. This directly throws us to the first question for you. What are the supply chain risks that you can name? Supply chain risk management is very important uh, nowadays, especially nowadays, because this question always available everywhere. And people are asking why it's important and why the people who get ready for this risk always, uh, uh, they are in the, in, the, in the path of success. Uh, as a professional supply chain risk management, always we are giving this answer that uh, supply chain is similar to the human being body, where always the human being always at risk, where we have lack of, uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, let's say, uh, food, lack of uh, uh, all the resources, maybe it will not be available. If we go back to the risk management or the supply risk management, uh, supply chain in a simple way, we are always talking about inbound and outbound. Inbound, where we have the raw material coming back to the factory, and then the factory will make the finished goods as uh, outbound. The outbound now going directly, the product will go directly to the customer, the end user. Now we have a three flows. The first flow is the material flow. The second flow is the information flow. And the third one is the, uh, let's say, data. It's, uh, it's all about data, where we can have the flow coming from the source till the end. Without data, we don't have any idea about what is going on in supply chain. So in supply chain, nowadays, we are talking about VOCA word. VOCA word like V-U-C-A, where we have volatility inside the supply chain, rate of change, means rate of change. And U stands for uncertainty, where we have unclear about the present, and the complexity C stands for complexity, whereas many key decision making or factors is not clear for the people who are working in supply chain. And the last one, ambiguity. The ambiguity is lack of clarity, where the people are having a lack of clarity in uh, finding out the right supplier, the right material the right time, anything can help the flow of material, data, finance to run inside the supply chain in a very good way. What are some supply chain risks? Of course, we have many kinds of risks. Uh, first of all, we have internal risks and we have external risks. And also we have solution. The uh, external and internal risks always uh, coming from inside and outside the organization. If we are going to look into the internal risks, of course, we have resources, many resources. If we don't have the management over, over those resources, 
we are going to lose the war. Uh, first of all, we have financial resources. If we don't manage the resources, the financial resources in a very wise way, then we will not be able to achieve our targets. Also, we have human resources. Also, we have inventory. Uh, we have also sometimes the risk coming from the IT, from the infrastructure for the data. If we don't have the data, if we don't have the vision about the future, where are we are going, where, what we can do. And unfortunately, uh, because I've been in Saudi Arabia for more than 20 years, uh, I have discovered that many business people, they don't take into consideration the suppliers as uh, the source of risk. So they are dealing with different suppliers without evaluation. And also, we, they don't have data. So the, the, the government in Saudi Arabia started to create something called the local content. The Saudi local content, which is compatible with the vision for 2030. So uh, they are putting exactly the local content, how the market, the Saudi market, share within the industry. If, for example, if you don't have the uh, right supplier, local supplier, that means you are depending on the uh, in, uh, foreign suppliers, that means foreign uh, content, it's not a local content. So uh, thank God that the, the uh, Saudi government nowadays, they are taking into consideration how to support the local content from human resources, financial resources, raw material. But still, we depend on the outsource uh, suppliers and we, we have weakness in this side, and, but people are working on it to support the uh, source of supply to be locally from Saudi or from the Arab world as uh, uh, suppliers. There are four key steps we need to follow to understand risk exposures within supply chain. What are the steps used? Of course, uh, we have different steps. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, in, the, in the risk, in order to identify the risks. For example, if you have a, a factory, if you have a restaurant, a hotel, whatever, you need to identify the risks, the hazards, where this risk is hiding. Sometimes you don't think about the risks and you don't think about the risk as hazard. Well, what do we mean by hazard? It's something which can make a huge risk if we don't take care of. So we are looking always to, for example, if we have a warehouse, we have firefighting system. If we don't maintain this firefighting system on time, and we need to make sure that this firefighting system works whenever it, it, it requires. So uh, suddenly we will discover that this uh, system will not be able to help us to stop the fire in the warehouse. So we ask always the companies to be on the level of this risk. This is number one, identify or identify relevant risks. The second one, to analyze and prioritize the risks. What do we mean by prioritize? And prioritize to make sure that we need to invest, we need to study, we need to hire people who are capable to check the risk and they are always be there to analyze the risk. For example, if you don't train your people, this is a risk. So we need to analyze what if we don't have the proper training for the people, what they will do, how they can help the organization to grow. The third one is to monitor. Monitor the risk is 
if we have the risk, we identify the risk, we need to, to check the risk, we need to put in mind that we cannot stop the risks. Sometimes something is outside our hands, like suppliers. Suddenly, maybe the supplier will not be able to deliver the right material. What will be the, what will happen to us? How can we manage our industry? So we need to put our eyes on the suppliers. We need to make sure that the supplier, our supplier, our, our right supplier available anywhere, everywhere, and he can help us to manage and to grow in our industry. And the uh, fourth one is to mitigate the risk. Mitigate, that means we cannot eliminate. We can mitigate, stop. We can reduce the impact on the uh, on the industry or on the uh, uh, on the business as business what are supply chain risk management strategies of course the strategies assuming that uh, people they have identified they know how to do it why they need to do it of course we need to build the risk culture inside the organization we cannot uh, uh, we cannot avoid giving the proper training for for our people this is one of the strategies where we can train the people we can ask the people to make sure within their reports uh, whenever they present any results they need to put risk management on, on the priority for example, if uh, we have shortage in the inventory, how can we find out a solution? Because if we don't find the solution, it's a risk. So this is one of the uh, situations always facing. Uh, also, uh, we have something like tools, like Calgic Matrix. Calgic Matrix, it was invented by or created or structured by Peter Kaljic in 1983, where he always uh, put and analyze the material within the uh, organization, like uh, leverage, non-critical, critical, and bottleneck. If you don't analyze your own data within the organization as one of the main strategies, that means you will not be able to achieve the growth. And on the other hand, you will face suddenly the risk in front of your face. So uh, the strategies uh, starts with acceptance and you need to be, uh, you need to have the trans uh, transference. Also, you need to have uh, uh, how to avoid risk avoidance, and also you need to have risk reduction. You need to have those four strategies as in your vision, in your mission within your organization. What are the benefits of supply chain risk management software? The benefits, if we are coming back to the supply chain, the supply chain, for example, we have two areas where supply chain have benefits. So if we are going to have software, we need to make sure that this software supports the supply chain to achieve its targets. Like in the operation-wise, increase, increase the, uh, let's say, the profit for procurement profit the production profit, and also decrease the assets leverage. In the, in the uh, supply chain, always we are looking forward to have the software or any ERP system to help the supply chain to have a right efficiency, to have the right time, the right speed, the right people. So, if we are talking about uh, uh, software, software will help us to anal analyze or to have the analytics 
Also, we can have a, a reduction in cost. We have greater agility. We can have also increased uh, uh, compliance. Uh, uh, on the other hand, we have uh, increased efficiency, enhanced visibility. This software can be very useful for the uh, supply chain organization. And also, we can, uh, uh, we can focus on the reports, like the PwC. There is a report by, done by PwC where they have identified that the risks coming always from ray, raw material prices, fluctuation, also uh, currency fluctuation, uh, market changes, energy also, and environmental. So if we are talking about software, if this software will not be able to uh, stop or to mitigate the risk, it will not be useful. Nowadays, we are using the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, this system will be able to analyze huge and big data where we can have as outcome the best solutions. Artificial intelligence can help us to find out the right decision because to reduce the error in our decisions or in relation to the supply chain, this will make a huge impact and the great impact on the supply chain. How long does it take to implement a supply risk management program? The program, I don't believe that we have a program in particular. Maybe you have a program to train the people or uh, to ask or to build the culture. But the risk management, supplier risk management, it's a continuous learning. So this program should be continuous. We should have target objectives every year as part of the mission and vision within the company where they can focus on the program and to find out the right solutions or to avoid the hazards within the, uh, within the organization. So we are talking about uh, risk formula here. The risk formula is between severity and probability. If we are going to study or to implement the uh, supplier risk management, uh, that means we are going to take into the area of the supplier or like nowadays, we have different crises in relation to the suppliers, or sometimes the supply, the source of supply is not available anymore because of the pandemic, because of the COVID-19. So what we are going to do in this area, how we are going to implement our program. First of all, we need to understand where we need to accept, where we need to reduce, where we need to avoid the risks. So we can understand that severity multiplied by probability or frequency of occurrence that will create the risk. So you need to have, you need to have the right disruption management within your organization in order to make sure you have the right business plan or business continuity plan. In your opinion, what does good supply chain risk management look like? The best, it's a very hard question uh, because it's not, there is nothing called perfect or uh, uh, let's the best. Uh, but um, we are always talking about, we are always talking about the supply chain where we have for example, assess risks. Uh, if we are going to make as a practice, annual practice, the uh, risk where we have assessment, where we uh, have uh, identification for some risks, 
Nowadays, after the COVID-19, people, they have redesigned their supply chain risk management because now they are focusing on finding alternatives. Like in Saudi Arabia, once we have the local content authority, it's a ministry, actually. And the head of the local content, it's he's a minister. So this is the right situation. This is the right reaction to create something, to have the ownership within the organization, with, within the country, where you make sure that the main resources like food, it's very critical for supply chain. So how can I avoid this disruption uh, in, in, in the future? We have learned from this crisis or this crisis exactly, uh, we have learned that in the future, we need to make sure that to find the sources for food, for the main area, for the main commodities, for the country, for the organization, for any area which can help us to grow. And if we don't grow, it's a risk. So risk management, we need to understand how to mitigate the risk and also how to monitor the risk and how to assess the risk as well. Thank you, Bashar, for your insights and being a part of our show. Thank you very much. Thank you for this wealthy, uh, uh, wealthy um, area we are talking about. And we hope that everybody will be there to learn from our uh, insights. Thank you very much. Thank you as well to everyone that tuned in today. Please make sure to follow us. Make sure to tune in every day as we continue discussing topics from learning and development industry and the latest trends in this field. While you can watch a recording of this episode on our YouTube and Vimeo channel, feel free to send us a message or a comment and suggest a topic of interest. Until next time, stay tuned.